Okay, so the word Guggen was coming up a lot, right? And not in a good way. So I was working with Guggen. I wanted to keep working with Guggen. I, I liked the idea of us working with Guggen because I knew these guys. It always treated me good. I felt like Guggen was the future. And, you know, the Noah didn't feel that way. Did you hook a loogie in the shop? I had to. I'm not gonna go all the way outside to do it like a fucking animal. <laughs> God, stay, dude. Oh. Oh, Was that a good that. clap? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Those are plenty, dude. Do you have your timer running? Oh, freaking hell. Oh, see, now we're gonna be 30 seconds behind. We're screwed. <laughs> Welcome back to another podcast, folks professionals over here you know mm. i don't know how much he's gonna leave in the podcast of what just happened but um <laughs> yeah so the show is still not sponsored by mountain dew still have not received a call freaking a so you know i we're just gonna turn it around turn it around real quick yep yep don't show the label should we pull the label off is that good i mean that i mean let's just be clear mountain dew we're not trying to be disrespectful here we're just simply saying that you know, I mean, you got to play, you got to pay to play. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, that sounded so cool in the microphone. Yeah, that's mm. it right there. I'm having a really hard time with this. I'm just going to turn mine around. Wow. Right, right. I just got punked out big time. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, so uh, this is episode number two of the podcast, obviously, and we've got some saucy topics. I mean, the title, I'm not even sure what we're going to title this, but either either one of the topics, if we put in the title, is going to be pretty saucy. So here's the thing. So... Andrew and I, we came up with this podcast idea because we have so many like saucy conversations and just fishing industry discussions. And we're just like, why can't we have these on a podcast? Why can't we just share this? And it just occurred to us like, screw it. We can, we can do whatever the hell we want. You know, there's so many comments in your videos where people are like, what the heck happened here? And today we're going to get into that. Yeah, exactly. So, um, before we get started, uh, how are you doing, buddy? How's everything going with you after a long day of filming with me? Pretty good, just unproductive as, as ever. The last few trips have been very unproductive. Yeah. Good news, he's got a swamp full of ducks. That's true, we just f found that out tonight. Because you saw like 100 ducks. I, I peed myself. You did, we were, we were trying to fish in my pond and you're like looking around, turned around looking at the ducks. I was <laughs> just amped. We need to get Flair on the horn and the Mendak boys yeah. because they're they're like the duck professionals. I guess you are too. Apparently, I've been <laughs> I like no four idea. times. I'm just really into it. You know, like I, when you I get it. do something outside off camera and it's kind of fun. We're gonna do this on camera, of course. But you know, oh yeah, I'm, we're gonna hunt my backyard swamp really freaking soon because it's season right now, right? Heck yeah, it's in season. Yeah, so we're like we're ready to go. I had no idea that there was ducks on my property, so you know. People always, people always find that so entertaining that, like, I don't know things about the property. They're like, like when we found that pond. Oh, dude. They're like, dude, how do you not know that? It's like, look, man, it's a pretty big piece of property. Like, when you, when you go out, yeah, you walk the perimeter and stuff, but some of this stuff was, like, deep, deep in the woods. Thick brush. It's not like I went out there with my wife to buy it, and we put on, like, boots and waders and started walking through a freaking swamp. So I didn't know there was ducks there either. I mean, I had no idea. This is my first winter here. So I think winter is like duck time, right? Dude, I was, the amount of ducks in that pond, the swamp is ridiculous. For those people that don't know, like what, what makes a, a swamp a good duck hunting location? Like what makes it, I mean, obviously the number of ducks, but I mean like. So look, so the difference between going out to public property and duck hunting, I've gone up to public property and duck hunted and not seen a duck, right? Wow. So how long do you stay out there? Is it like deer hunting? You get out there before light, set the decoys up, do your thing. And it's, it's over in a couple hours, but early, cold, you know the ordeal. We were fishing, saw... We saw a bunch. 50? There was, there was a bunch. I mean, even me, somebody who doesn't even know like what constitutes a lot of ducks. Right. There was a lot of ducks flying over. Right. And they just kept coming, like in waves. I was so amped. My heart was pounding. <laughs> I'm like watching the bobber. We're fishing with live bait. I'm watching the bobber because that's what you do when you're fishing with live bait. And he's like, he's I'm, like God, there's, there's some more. He's, oh, there's some more. I started like, just what are walking you talking towards him. I was just panicking. <laughs> ah, ah. 
It's like, is there any way we could shoot these ducks right now? It's like, no, you don't have a license. We don't have a gun on us. Okay, yeah. But that's something to be looking forward to in the future for sure. I mean, we're going to have to let Andrew lead the way on that one. But, um, yeah, so podcasts, duck hunting, the, the channel is just – we're getting crazy here in 2021. Yeah. I yeah. think this will come out in 2021, I think. Yeah. Maybe even like the very beginning of 2021. Dude, a lot of stuff has happened in 2020, though. Dude, tell me about it. You want to hear some of the craziest news I've found? Sure. In the fishing industry? Not okay. the industry, but... Please. <laughs> this isn't funny, but... Oh, God. <laughs> you got to love it when you laugh, and you're like, oh, geez. I, I should This must not... be a sad story. Gosh, I wish I did not laugh, because okay. when I read this... It, it, it didn't happen... Okay, just, yeah, go. Okay. This was published December 21st, 2020. Okay. North Korean fishing boat captain publicly executed. For what? For listening to banned foreign radio. <laughs> what? Oh my god, I just laughed too. It's it's that absurd. was bad. It's That's somebody's bad. life, dude. Okay, so wait, December twenty twenty. So that just happened. Yeah. North Korea. That place sucks. I think we can all agree. Okay. So is there more details? Man publicly publicly executed. That's public. the interesting part. In mid-October, a captain of a fishing boat from, I don't know how to say, yeah. Shangjin was executed by firing squad. Damn! That's not a, that's no joke, man. Dude, out on the boat, fishing with your buddies, just jamming. How did they know he was listening to public or, like, banned radio? Gosh, I don't know. They must have, like, game wardens, except they're, like, going around radio? trying to see if you're breaking the rules. It says, on charges of listening to Radio Free Asia oh. regularly over a long period of time. What the freak? Freaking A, man. What does the fact that he was a fisherman have to do with anything, though? Kind of seems like that's yeah. a detail that doesn't really matter. Gosh. It, well, he was publicly shot... At the base in front of hundreds of other captains of fishing. I guess that's a really big part of, like, their yeah. economy. Well, yeah, they live on, I think, Korea. I'm about, I'm about to, like, really sound stupid, but I think Korea, isn't it, like, adjacent to an ocean or, like, a big body yeah. of water or isn't something? Isn't it, like, a big peninsula? I, I believe so. so Never I would, been. Yeah. I would assume fishing is a huge part of what they do. Yeah. Like, to survive, not for fun. So, uh, man, they're executing people in North Korea for whatever. Gosh. Yeah, that's not a laughing matter for sure, but um, where did that news article pop up at? Like, what are you subscribed to? Where the, <laughs> you, are you just subscribed to any, like, any fisherman, any bad thing happens to a fisherman? You're like, I need to know about that. <laughs> yeah, man, the fishing is just, we're, we're one big family, you know? That's true. That really sucks. Um, what can I say, you know? If, if any Korean, well, North Korean people, because South right. Korea, is, they're free. Yeah. And they're like, they're cool. Any North Korean people hears this podcast, please come on over to America if you can, and uh, we will welcome you, especially if you're a fisherman, right? Yeah, prayers and thoughts out to the family. Yeah, that's absolutely. not funny. That's not, no, not at all. It's and just I mean, absurd. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just, yeah. I didn't know how serious it was. I just knew it was a crazy piece of fishing, quote unquote fishing news, not really fishing related. But anyways, I digress. Yeah. So on the subject of 2020 being crazy, and I mean like beyond the obvious I mean, the pandemic, the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. And it's still going on. Let's, I mean, I love how people, they're like, oh, 2020 is almost over. It's like, yeah, but this whole thing is not like even close to being over, right? Well, I mean, they're giving out vaccines. I don't know. That's a whole other discussion. But 2020, it wasn't just coronavirus that made things crazy, right? Like, let's just narrow our scope a little bit to the fishing, you know, YouTube fishing industry. And 2020 started out with a bang because if you remember, not sure if you remember this, but uh, our good friend, should we even, should we say his name, his channel name? We could say his name. Yeah, sure. So, okay. Our good buddy Milliken Fishing. I, mean, I say that with a little sarcasm. Um, he made a video, I think it was on January the 1st, yeah, New which Year's. is funny. And so this topic has been brought to us. A bunch of people have wanted my input on this all year and it just kind of just, you know. I don't know. A lot of people didn't pay attention to it, but this is kind of our chance to talk about it. But so Ben Milliken over at Milliken Fishing put a video out January the 1st, which is ironic because he had been working with Catch Co for a long time, like years, I think. MTB, Catch Co, Mystery Tackle Box, all that good stuff. And his contract expired or he terminated it, whatever, December the 31st. And on January 1, being the next day, he comes out with the video. What was the title of it? I don't, 
it was something about how Guggen copied Six Cents. Guggen, either Guggen and, and Ketchco, because it, the baits yeah. he was using were Guggen and Ketchco collaborated baits, and how, in his opinion, being the key words here, and we're going to talk about that more, in his opinion, had basically stolen designs from Six Cents. And, I mean, you know, the video happened a long time ago, so I don't even remember exactly, like, what his claims were specifically. I don't really care because, I mean, I watched the video then, and I remember thinking, like, damn, this dude's just mad. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes people, they're sour about something, and you can just tell because they're just angry. You know what I mean? And they're trying to put, they're trying to connect the dots, but they just can't. So, <laughs> I mean, you, you're, you're kind of new, <clears throat> excuse me, you're kind of new to the YouTube fishing industry. So you had to have remembered when that happened. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it was, that's a direct slap to the face. Right. That's if like, you're going to accuse somebody of that, that's like, yeah. that's going next level stuff. Thanks for building my channel. Guggen, thanks for... Right. I mean, yeah, the guy had plenty of help from Guggen. I mean, I, I don't even think if Milliken was sitting right here and he was being honest, I think he would admit that maybe not Guggen, but Flair. That's what I meant. Yeah, That's what I Flair, meant. him and Flair, good buddies. They go way back. And I know for a fact that Flair helped him a ton behind the scenes. Now, I'm not saying that when somebody helps you that you're indebted to them forever. Sure. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is... When somebody has gone out of their way to help you as much as Flair did, and then to turn around and attack that person's brand with such malice and not a lot of evidence, it just seems like sour grapes. You know what I mean? Like, it just seems like somebody who's really upset about something, and they can't say what they're actually upset about, so they just have to reach and grab for something else. Yeah, it's bull. It's really... Yeah. I mean, like, I'm not just going to sit here and say video is stupid, because... I mean, the the baits are similar, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, every crankbait that's been made since, what, the 1980s? I mean, yeah. we could look this up. I don't even know, like, when the first crankbait was made yeah. or who made it. But let's, I mean, whoever made the first crankbait, guess what every other company has done since then? Made crankbaits, right? Here, I'm going to look that up. You you t keep on talking because I, well, I, now I just want to know. Yeah. I don't even, like, this is how much we prepare for the show. One thing that's crazy, though, that he did bring to my attention that kind of blew my mind. Did you know that the Guggen one-fourth ounce crankbait weighs the same as a one-fourth ounce? Dude, shut up. <laughs> no freaking way. Yeah, my guy Milliken actually pulled out a scale and weighed the damn baits. I mean, come on, man. Like, I'm not even going to – if you weigh a, a quarter-ounce crankbait – if you, if you weigh 20 quarter-ounce crankbaits across the fishing industry, doesn't it bear, bear a reason that most of them are going to weigh a quarter of an ounce? I'm just saying, man. Like, I can't even – oh, hold on. The first crankbait. Here we go. we got an article from Bassmaster. That should be a legitimate source. But, yeah, I mean, that, that was one of the things he did. I know he did a bunch of different tests, or he, like, cut them open, right, and he – looked at the inner workings and the, the ball bearings and he even like shook them and like compared their sounds like, you know, like the knocking sounds. I'm not sure like what determination was made What's that, the that they're similar. Like that, I think that was the main takeaway was that they were similar, but as we all yeah. know, I mean, I could, I could make an, a million examples of how other fishing companies besides Guggen, let's just take Guggen and six cents off the table for a second. In catch go. And let's just say, you know, I'm not even going to name any brands. Let's just say any brand, yeah. right? Any brand that makes a soft plastic stick bait worm, right? Okay. And there are many. I don't need to name any. There's, there's a million. I, I, I'm like, my head's flooding with them right now. Like one, two. I mean, literally like three or four companies other than Guggen and uh, Sixth Sense. Now, does that mean, because we know who the first one was, Gary Yamamoto, right? Senko. Everybody knows that. That's no, I mean, there's no, there's no secret there, right? So other companies have made their own versions of stick baits, and they are very similar to Senkos. But does that mean that now every single other company who made a stick bait that was made out of soft plastic, and that there's different salt, you know, chemicals in there, and 
Does that mean that every single one of those companies is a thief and a liar and they should be drug out in public and like called a cheater? I just, right? It's, I don't know, man. The, the cool thing about Guggen to me is just, it was a bunch of backyard anglers. We've talked about it before. Right. And then plus the stick that is Rackley came together and said, let's make a banging fishing brand. And they did it. I can't you find know? anything. That's dope. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, Guggen Squad, I mean, there's no, I mean, we, we get what happened. I mean, Guggen Squad decided to make their own stuff. That's because the fishing industry really didn't accept them. Right. I mean, that's that's really that's what happened. The fishing industry wanted nothing to do with Guggen when it first became a thing. I mean, like the fishing industry, as in like rods, reels, brand, uh, uh, baits, those companies, they wanted nothing to do with Guggen. So Guggen <laughs> did the only thing that made sense. And that's like, well, hell, we're just going to make our own stuff. I mean, if nobody's going to mess with us. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think like what else what else he talked about in that video? He just like, he just sounded like he was really upset about something. And I don't know what, and maybe Milliken can shine some light on it for us. I don't know. How did, I mean, how did Eli, like Eli Ross, all the guys at Ketchco, paid him a salary for a year? Oh, man, no, more than a year. He was working for Ketchco for like three years, I think. Three years. I could be wrong, but multiple years for sure, because I was working with Ketchco at the time for my third year, I think, or fourth year. And Milliken had been there since I had been there, even before me. Well, I, I don't know, man. I'm sure Ketchko was pissed. I mean, we could get old Ross Gordon on here one day, maybe. But he probably wouldn't want to talk about it. I don't blame him. Because everybody's moved on. Like, on our side, the Guggen side, I mean, we don't care. I mean, it never – I don't think it really ever resonated with anybody that mattered. You know, I think people were upset, obviously, because who wouldn't be upset when somebody makes a claim like that? I mean, if somebody looked me in my face and was just like, you're a cheater and a liar, I'd be pissed, you know, because especially because my thing would be, OK, well, how can show me some evidence to back up what you're saying, dude, because anybody could just say something like that. And then you weigh a quarter ounce crankbait and say, well, it weighs the same as my <laughs> crankbait. And I'm like, oh, well, hell, you got me on that one, dude. I mean, <laughs> they style both. is different. Your <laughs> lipless crankbait looks just like my lipless crankbait. And that was basically what the argument was. Like, we're over here making a joke, but hey, go watch the video. I mean, that was the argument, was that they looked alike. They sounded alike. I mean, they both had treble hooks with three hooks. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't know what my contention to that video would be is how would you propose a crankbait company come up with a brand new crankbait design that doesn't borrow technology from any other crankbait that ever existed. How do you do that? That would be my question, like a legitimate question. How can you come up? Because my point is the fishing industry, bass fishing has been so popular for like what, 50 years. And it's grown. And it's grown the last decade has been huge for baits and just even five years, the last five years has been an explosion. So, you know, it just seems like people are going to pick on the company who is selling a ton of product. They're very popular. You know, they're, they're doing big things, and it's just easy to pick on them, right? Like the people up top, it's always easy to take shots at them, you know, because a lot of times you're not even going to recognize that you took shots at them. I'm, I'm pretty sure, has any Guggen or anybody like Ketchco Guggen ever officially addressed this? I don't think so. I didn't see you. I don't think so either. And once again, we could be wrong. Get in the comments section and let us know. But I'm pretty sure nobody has ever even addressed it other than like right now. You know what I mean? Like this is, it's a, it's almost exactly a year later and me and you are addressing it and nobody else really did. And that's just because so many of our subscribers have just over the year have been like, hey, did you guys see this? Did you guys see that? So, I mean, I don't know, man. Like I'm trying to think of, you know, the, the Guggen's response to that, like what they thought. Cause I know I've had this conversation with a couple of the guys, Flair, especially cause Flair, you know, and his relationship with Milliken is well-documented. We all know they were friends. They're from the same area and Flair taught him a ton about YouTube. So Flair's especially sour about this. I'm sure I'm not going to put words in Flair's mouth cause he's a grown man too. Maybe we'll have him on the podcast one day and we'll ask him about it. Maybe he'll talk about it. Maybe he won't, but 
you got to feel for Flair in that situation because, I mean, golly, you just uh, you try to help a guy. You know that okay. Let's 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 draw a parallel real quick, and this may be a, not an unfair parallel, but let's just say let's take me and you for example, right? Now you don't owe me anything right now. Now I've helped you with some things. I've showed you some things, kind of some behind the scenes YouTube stuff because I want you to succeed. But you've done the work. You know you've earned you on your own. But that would be like in a year or like six months. Let's just say your channel blows up, and you just say. Just F you, dude. Like, I'm not working with you anymore. You know, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Um, I'm not going to work with you and your company anymore. You know, not my company, but, you know, Guggen. Right. That would be like, to me, you know, you doing that for really just no reason other than you just thought you were better than me. Because that's kind of the word about the Milliken situation is it just it's an ego thing, you know. Like, his ego has grown. And once again, it's me speculating. I don't know. Milliken, please feel free to defend yourself. I'm just saying, you know, it's, it seems like it's an ego thing that just uh, got out of control. True. And and I just want to clarify, we're not saying Milliken is trash by any means. Not at all. Not He's at all. He's got some fire videos, but at the same time. We are addressing one particular claim that Milliken made that and video. one particular video. That's all we're talking about. Yeah. That's it, because yeah. – I, I've met Ben, I've met, I've met him, I've spoken to him. I don't have a particular issue with him, yeah. you know? I mean, I'm not going to fight Flair's battles for him, and he wouldn't ask me to, you know? I mean, I wouldn't fight anybody's battles for them, you know? So this isn't my battle. I mean, even though I work with Guggen now, I'm in the squad. So, of course, it, it, it hurt me when I saw that because I just, I knew in my heart that that wasn't, true i knew that you know like we're not out here ripping off people's designs you know what i mean like there aren't a bunch of people in a room at catch because they're just like Ooh, who can we steal designs from today you know that's not what's going on in the research and development stuff i know because i'm on a lot of these calls with other stuff that we're making for the future and we're not out there ripping people off we're coming up with new designs but they just might happen to look like something that may have existed at one time but that doesn't make, like, that's not stealing. Those are two completely different things. You know? You know? <laughs> I'm sorry. I get fired up, man. I'm just like, uh, I don't know. It's just messed up when he talks about our baits weighing a fourth of an ounce, you know? Dude, yeah, that was, that was cringe. I can't believe he did that part. That's weird, man. If you could have gone back and adjusted that video, you might have wanted to cut that part out. That's... <laughs> <laughs> maybe he joked about it too. I don't even know. I didn't watch the full video, so I could be. Maybe he was joking when he did that. I don't know. <laughs> I hope he was joking because that surely can't be like a point of comparison. <laughs> I mean, shoe. Yeah, shoe. Exactly. Oh, spider, spider. Oh, kill that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> juice me. <laughs> <laughs> that squeal, though. Did I squeal? No, I did. When I hit it, I said, oh. ah. Whoa. God. So as you drink that water. A nice cold beverage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know you know who else really did not want to be in the Guggen squad? Who? Your buddy kicking their bass. <laughs> oh, man. Have you <sighs> talked about him online at all since <clears throat> that whole ordeal happened? I made one video. My mic sounds funny. I made one video... Um, when I joined the Guggen squad, wait, right. that was the video, right? I joined the Guggen squad. I made a video. It was like why I decided to join the Guggen squad, but it wasn't why you and him. No, 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 no. But, but I did, I did talk about it though. Like I glossed over what happened with myself fishing with Norm and kicking their bass TV. But you want, you don't want to gloss over. You want to dive into it. I want to know what happened. Oh God. Dang baby. That was nasty. Um, okay. So it's funny that you say that because we were just talking about, you know, Milliken and everything. And it's clear that Milliken did not want to be, did not want to, you know, work with Guggen. I mean, I don't know. We're all different people. That's the thing. That's what I always say. Like human beings are different, you know, like not everybody has to work with Guggen. Not everybody has to like Guggen and Guggen. We don't care if everybody likes us. Or likes the products or what I mean, you know, that's fine. People are entitled to their opinion. But there are certain people out there who 
just will not work with Guggen. They just can't, can't do it. And I don't know why. I didn't really explain what happened between me and him. I'm just saying, like, there are people out Let there. Let me know. Let me know. I want to well, know. And it's funny because you worked with us all. I did. The first time I met you, you filmed for myself, Fishing with Norm, and Kicking Their Bass TV. Each of you. What do you remember from that? That little threesome. Or foursome, actually. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Not a threesome. A foursome. Because that was the first time you meeting any of us. And at that time, you didn't even have your fishing channel yet. Right. We, so that was like, right. I mean, hell, that was a long, that was a, it was only a year. Well, when was that? 18 months ago? Yeah, summer, not last summer, summer before. Yeah, not this last, not 20, summer of 2019. We talked about it a little bit last time. I just mentioned how cool you guys were. But like the actual dynamic of the group, I remember y'all had a business call while I was there. Didn't even know the dudes. They're just talking business. Heck of business in front of some random. <laughs> Who was the business call with? Do you remember? It could have been a mixture of Noah's dad yeah. and somebody else. I don't. I was don't it Ketchco? It could have been Luz. It could have been Ketchco. Yeah. I was. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I was I had just no like, idea what was going on. I was sitting there like, whoa. <clears throat> I mean, to uh, to you, we were like, we were like big timers. Yeah, I, and, I, and I had no idea that these guys made actual money. Yeah. Like, I got there, and y'all were, y'all were throwing numbers around in front of me. You met me one hour before. I yeah. Was, I was like, oh, my God. The stuff was getting serious I at that like, time. Oh, my God. Tough decisions were being made <laughs> at that time. It was wild. Yeah. But, but yeah, I remember it because it was um, – I don't want to sound like a douchebag. No, it's fine. I mean – it wasn't very well planned at all. No, that's a fact. I can, I can, I remember that and quite no, well. No plan. It was very like, I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. Do you have a video idea? I don't know. Right. And it kind of bounced around. And then you're talking big money. And I was like, <laughs> how do these guys even what? get paid? I, I literally <laughs> thought I they like, suck. I was like, what the heck, man? We did suck back then. Yeah, that's how it was. You didn't suck. It was just well, like... Well, I mean, you know what I mean. There there was... We didn't know. There wasn't a lot of direction in right. the group. No. And I didn't really know what was going on. But y'all had a group that was popping. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of views every week on each of your channels. What happened? No, yeah. 2019 was crazy, especially that summer. We grew so fat, like the three of us together. Um. So, I mean, the, the original idea was we were going to form a, di a squad. You know what I mean? Like, that was kind of the, that was kind of the, or that was a thought, you know, it's like, and it wasn't even going to be in direct competition with the Guggen squad because I was working with Guggen Bates at the time and I had every intention of staying with, you know, quote unquote with Guggen. But we were also working with Luz and I think Luz had the same kind of idea. Like, you know, we could build the secondary squad and, I mean, we had talked to Ketchko, and I, I don't even – I don't know. I mean, we hit, that was the kind of basic plan because I'd worked with Luz for a long time. I'd worked with Guggen for a long time. Yeah, we talked about this in the first podcast. Right. We don't want to go over too much of that again. So let's just focus on the, the group aspect. Um, myself fishing with Norm, kicking their bass TV. Norm was just along for the ride. He was there for the ride. And he's a, you know, I love Norm. He's an awesome guy. He's dope. But I think myself and Noah were kind of the ones making the moves. You know what I mean? Because I had a lot of connections, obviously, with Luz. Because I, you know, I don't want to sound like a douchebag either. But I introduced them both to Luz. You, you were know? the first social media influencer for Luz? Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, well, the first paid person. Right. Yes. I believe. that These are not like, we're not like experts here. I'm just saying I believe. I'm pretty sure I was the first paid influencer by Luz, like a monthly salary type situation basically put Luz on the map well i mean Luz has been <laughs> yeah i know right Luz has been around for a long time yeah. let's be honest and i love the people at Luz, but um yeah so they started getting into the social media game and i i introduced noah and norm to these people and now they they both work with Luz. i think uh, in 2020 they've both worked with Luz now for the first year so right is am i getting that right yeah yeah so this year would have been their first year with Luz. Maybe full time. I, first year full time. Right. Yeah, like actually like drawing the salary and like being an actual influencer with the company. 
So, so we had the, the squad idea, you know, and we had talked to different companies about it and we were kind of all in on it. Okay. So the word Guggen was coming up a lot, right? And not in a good way. So I was working with Guggen. I wanted to keep working with Guggen. I, I liked the idea of us working with Guggen because I knew these guys. They always treated me good. I felt like Guggen was the future. And, you know, the Noah didn't feel that way. I'm trying to be kind here. I don't want to be like, you know, throwing anybody under the bus or anything like that. But I'm also being real. He wasn't about that. He did not want to be under Guggen. I think that's how he looked at it. You know, like no matter what we did, if we joined up with Guggen or like we were working with Guggen, we were going to be under their thumb. You know what I mean? And I didn't see it that way. And I think poor old Norm just was there and he didn't, he saw two of his buddies going kind of splitting in different opinions and he didn't really know what to do. But I think Norm was kind of leaning, you know, to not be under Guggen's thumb too. And it, I think it was just a, a difference of opinion. Like, I didn't see it that way. I saw it as like, look, Guggen's been good to me. They've got resources. They've got connections. They've got huge things on the horizon. And now we know what those things are. Guggen rods, you know, all the different products that we're coming out with, all the baits, click baits, you know, contenders, swim I mean, like everything. We're In a year or two, Guggen's going to make every product that exists for fishing. And I, I, thought, I felt that way at the time. But Noah and Norm, to an extent, just didn't quite feel that way at that time. Now, of course, <clears throat> things can change. Opinions can change. But that's how everybody felt at the time. You know what I remember vividly from experience in the car? Send it. Thing. Um, Noah was very vocal about what he wanted, the direction he wanted your group, your squad to go. And he was very, very specific about how he did not want – to be under anybody else. He wanted yeah. to be a trailblazer. Yeah. Which is cool. Like that's which is respectable. Cool. Yeah. yeah. In business, it's cool to have somebody that's like, you know what, I have enough faith in myself to build something huge. That's cool. Yeah. And you, I remember so specifically in being a, around y'all the entire time. There was no time I was not around you guys. Yeah. And that was the second time y'all collabed together big time. And I don't think you did after that, Pharrell, all three of you together. I don't know. Yeah, I'd have to think about it. It's I'm very, not sure. very specific. Anyways, you were very quiet, dude. You didn't say a lot. Yeah. Like, he would be like, we're not going to be under Guggen. We're going to be doing our own thing. We're going to build something huge. It's going to be crazy. And you were just like. <laughs> I remember thinking, this is so awkward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You probably got the sense that we weren't on the same page. It was weird. It was <laughs> tense, dude. There's yeah. any time when you're talking about a grown man's salary, all three of them are grown men. I'm not saying Lojo's the grown man, they're kids. I'm saying every, yeah. everybody, when you're talking about somebody's future, it's a big deal. So, yeah. 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 I think, yeah, I, th I think one thing that I, I might be overstepping my boundaries here, but one oh, thing. please overstep. One thing that led to that group's demise is, y'all weren't speaking, like communicating right. what you truly thought the whole time. And it was very obvious from an outsider's perspective. Probably so. And that, that probably was because we just liked each other. You know what I mean? You know how it is. I mean, you like somebody, you respect somebody. The last thing you want to do is disappoint that person sure. by not agreeing with them. But myself and Noah certainly did not agree on not only like our future, but how to get there. You know, I think we had the same goal as far as the accomplishments that we wanted or like the, the, just the level of whatever that we wanted to get to. We know we wanted to be YouTube fishermen, right? We yeah. wanted to make our money being YouTube fishermen. We wanted to be part of something big. We wanted to have our own stamp on things, but we disagreed on how to get there. I think he felt like he just was not going to do it with Guggen. Like if Guggen was attached to a project, he wasn't going to do it. So did and, they ever offer anything to him? Well, I think, and once I, I, I don't know because I'm, I don't make offers for Guggen. I don't accept offers for Noah. So, but from what I understand, if he had been willing to, I guess, 
you know, come along with me. If, like, basically, if all three of us had come on to Guggen at the same time, Noah would have probably been the next member of the Guggen squad. That's just me, like, how I'm looking at it and how I saw everything take place. Because, obviously, I joined the Guggen squad about five months into this year once I had kind of proven myself and the guys felt like, okay, you know, Lojo's serious about this. He's viable. He's a viable channel. He's going to be around for a while. I mean, and look, and you look at Noah's channel and his channel is bigger than mine right now for whatever that's worth. If you're big, if you care about subscriber count, his channel is bigger than mine. His views look pretty good. Some, you know, most of the time. So I have to assume he would have been in the Guggen squad by now and he would have, you know, and, and, and who knows like, how his how big his channel is now and how impactful it is for him who knows how much bigger it could be if he had joined joined the squad you know what i mean and come on when i did and, and for that matter who knows where norm would be he could very well be larger than he is in the squad i don't know i mean these are all hypothetical situations we don't know what would have happened we don't know if it would have ever worked but i have to assume that that's where we would be right now so if you don't mind me asking, how's the relationship with the boys now? Y'all well, still kick it on the weekends? <laughs> watch the game? <laughs> Every weekend, baby. <laughs> well, obviously, Norm and I are still tight um, because... Hey, he trespassed on your form the other he day. He freaking trespassed the hell out of my form. Brought me a good bass, so. Yeah, heck yeah. Shout so, out. I, so, yeah, shout out to Norm and Yak, Yak Pack for bringing me a nice little bass. But, um, <clears throat> you know... And I don't, I don't want to speak too much about this next part because I wasn't involved directly in it. And one thing I've learned in my life, don't talk about something if you're not sure about it. You know what I mean? If you weren't there, if you didn't experience it, if you don't know, you know, you can speculate a little bit, but you don't really need to talk about it. So I think Norm and Noah have had a pretty good falling out too. I mean, you've heard some Wait, about so that. So you and Noah aren't cool anymore? Well, I haven't, I haven't spoken to Noah since probably the summer of 2020. Since you... Join, yeah. Since it was, I was like official, and but see, it coincided with I think something had happened between Norm and Noah. Once again, I don't know what happened, so I'm not going to speculate. But I know that they're not cool anymore because they're not filming together anymore. And so, you know, I, I still talk to Norm. I mean, Norm and I are, you know, we're just as cool as we have been ever. I've known Norm longer than I've known anybody on YouTube. So I hope that Norm and myself are always tight. Um, I'd like to be tight with Noah. I have nothing against Noah. You know, this, the theme of this podcast is like, we're addressing things that have happened that weren't good, like with Milliken, with Noah. But once again, I have no problem with Milliken or Noah. I mean, and they know that if they know anything about me, if I have a problem with you, I will certainly bring it to you. But you know, these are just things that happen. I mean, I guess maybe that's just how business goes sometimes, you know, people get pulled in different directions. <clears throat> Excuse me. They have advice from different people, and maybe they follow so-and-so's advice, and they go this way, and I follow this advice, and I go that way. I mean, it's just, it happens, man. It's life, you know? I mean, it's, yeah. it doesn't make me happy because I, I don't want bad blood. I don't like it when, you know, people are calling us out for this and that, or I don't like it when there's bad blood, and, you know, I certainly wouldn't want any of that. I mean, hell, I'd welcome any of these two guys on this podcast. If this sure. podcast ends up becoming like something, I would welcome either one of them on this podcast, even though they don't work with Guggen and yeah. they don't, you they're know. They're in the fishing industry. They're or, in the fishing industry. And just because you choose not to work with Guggen or to be a part of Guggen Affiliates, let's go. Um, yeah. New affiliate right here, baby. New Guggen <laughs> Affiliate. Flesh. Let's go. In the flesh. <laughs> Um, it doesn't. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. Of course it, not. By any means, it just means not. you want to do something else in business. And just because you don't film with somebody doesn't mean you're not cool with them. So exactly. And I mean, there's there's certainly nothing wrong with that. I mean, I kind of equate it to like me and you are kind of big college football fans and stuff like that. And it's like you could root for different teams. You know what I mean? You could which pull hard, which me and you do. We talk trash all the time. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes Even though, true feelings are hurt yeah. in that time. As today, we mentioned the SEC <laughs> championship. And yeah. you seriously got a little quiet. Yeah, so I was hurt. I shouldn't yeah. have mentioned that, though. Although my team did beat your team this year, though. Yeah, we don't have to talk about that. Yeah, exactly. See, but it, I equate it to that because you know how seriously people take, like, their college sports and stuff? Like, they're serious about it, especially in the South. But if – your best friend rooted for a different team, you wouldn't like stop like, you wouldn't not like them anymore. You wouldn't stop talking to them. You would just, you would understand 
there was a difference in philosophy. There was a difference in opinion. And it's just like our country right now. You know what I mean? You don't have to hate people that don't share your opinion. Like, that's such a stupid notion. And we can even disagree fundamentally loudly about something. Doesn't mean you have to hate that person. So I'm glad you, like, you brought all this up because it's like, this is a great chance to say we have no issue with either one of these guys, you know. But it's just what happened, happened. Uh -huh. You know, and we... It's part of our job to address it now, especially now that we're running this fire podcast. Fire. It's just talking about <laughs> random things. I mean, why people, not talk yeah. about this? People were, were curious how you and Noah's relationship was now, is then. And I think it's important to say there was no, Noah did not steal money from you or some crazy crap no, go no, down. No. It just, y'all, you chose Guggen, Noah chose a different route. Yeah, and when you when you start working with a brand, as you have taught me, you can't work for Coke and be taking pictures on Instagram drinking a Pepsi. Right, yeah. just doesn't work. Right, you kind of have to be all in with what you're doing in life if you want to succeed. Which sucks. Which sucks because it does divide people. And it's the yeah. real world, though. Yeah. So it is. And you just said something. Um, gosh, what did you just say? You just said. Uh, Coke and Pepsi <laughs> before that Mountain it was Dew about suck. okay it was about Noah stealing money yeah okay so there was a rumor going around that he had like screwed me over on some business deal or something Didn't that's happen. not true yeah, yeah no none of that's none of that's true there was no there's no bad blood between me and Noah that I know of um like I've said a million times I would invite Noah to come on here and defend himself there's no bad blood there's simply a difference in opinion philosophy and choices just differing choices. I mean, that's simple as that. And I don't, I'm old enough and why is it, well, not, that was stupid to say. I'm old enough and have the experience to know that just because somebody doesn't agree with you doesn't mean they're your enemy. That's a terrible, terrible opinion to take in life. So, I mean, you know, I mean, what, what can I say? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I would like to wrap this episode up? How? Drinking game? No. I'll go get you some beer, man. Um, no. Because no. you don't have, you have, have you even touched your diet, do Yeah, man, I've been hammering. Oh, snap. That yeah, thing is man. almost gone. You're going to have to piss like a racehorse here soon. <laughs> you better wrap this thing up. I got a bottle taped to my leg right now. I've just been. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. I'm not even wearing pants. Are you? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I am because I'm freezing cold. We don't have heat in here yet. This building is awesome, by the way. I didn't, we didn't even talk about the building. We're going to have lights in here soon, and then once we have electricity, we're going to have the ability to heat this thing, <laughs> so that's going to be good, because it's really not even cold yet. Also, to wrap, this, to wrap this podcast, if you guys would hop in the comments, give us some tips for how to build the set to this podcast, because Ooh. we would like to make something kind of cool. And we, and we had the room to do it. Yeah. And once we have electricity, like, we can do more. You know, it's an interesting thought. We're just going to get off on a whole different tangent here. But yeah. somebody was telling me you can, like, build a loft, build a loft, like a second level. No freaking way. Yeah. It's, it's not hard to do, apparently. Like, you could – and you think about Think about how high these roofs are and stuff. You could definitely, like, build a, a loft with, like, some stairs somewhere and then have, like, storage up there, like kayaks, uh, those – what the frick are those things called? Paddle, Paddle boards. boards. Yeah. Just stuff that you're not, like, using this at the moment. You can kind of get them – off the main floor though you know i don't know yeah but uh tips on the the podcast set i think this set is dope for what we have right now though i'm excited i'm excited there's some big things in the work oh, yeah. i'm trying to stop saying yeah <laughs> i'm trying to figure my way around this so all the constructive criticism is appreciated oh and topics we need topics that's yes. what we need what do you want to hear about what do you want to know about and not just like bs you know just trying to please everybody. What do you actually want to know about? Because right. we'll we'll dive into these topics. I think today we went pretty deep in these topics, or deeper than most people would go. It's it's deep as we can go without being rude, being a douchebag. We don't want to be douchebags. We don't want to be the fish and gossip team. Right, exactly. And that's not what this is. This is this is some real ish here. This <laughs> is like real talk. We're not filtering ourselves. Grown men. We're not going out of our way to not say things. We're literally just talking truthfully. And I'm hoping, well, I know we're going to have big guests on this podcast because we're going to have Guggen Squad members on here. I'm telling you right now, even if they don't agree, I'm going to make them do it. So they're going to, they're going to do it. Maybe we'll have some non-Guggen people. Maybe we'll just have some random people. 
I don't know. I'm not opposed to anything. I want this podcast to be as real as possible. And in order to do that, you can't like suppress somebody else's voice. You have to welcome anybody's voice on a podcast for it to be really good. So, um, yeah, I think we're Dope. done. Good to know. Good stuff. Yeah. You want to wrap us, wrap us up? Sure thing. Wrap us up, dude. Wrap them. Thanks for tuning in. Go ahead. Catch some more Fat Sally's. We'll see you on the next one.